when you focus on the breath, try to find a level of focus that's just right, not too strong, not too weak. If it's too strong, you start putting unnatural pressures on different parts of the body. It's going to have an effect on your health and make it, make it difficult to stay long periods of time. So try to find a way of dealing with the breath where you're listening to it and you get a sense of what it has to say. When it tells you it's being squeezed too much, when it tells you that it's being blocked. There's a lot to learn from the breath. It's not just a post to tie the mind down to. You learn from the breath and you see, you know, it'll tell you immediately what the mind is doing. It's like a good, as John Lee says, it's a good mirror for the, the mind. If the mind is out of order, the breath's going to be out of order too. So if you see something wrong with the breath, okay, something's wrong with the mind probably too. So you want to check that out. And then you learn where you can move the breath intentionally and where you just have to let it be. It's this back and forth of working at things for a while, then stepping back and observing and working again. That's how you really learn things. Everything in the world is learned this way. And the same principle applies here. You're going to learn about the mind, learn about the breath. You've got to work with them. But at the same time, you have to learn how to listen. If you just go barging in, you can get things done in a particular way, but not well. But if you listen, are careful, and there are a lot of things that can be learned right here in the present moment, because that's where, every, the, it's where the Buddha learned everything he was going to learn. For his awakening is all right here, where the mind was still with the breath. And things were able to settle out, settle out separate out, by probing and asking questions, and then looking and observing, and then probing some more, and then looking and observing some more. That's how he came to awakening, and that's how we have to come to awakening, too. We can't just sit here and note, 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 or hope that one single me method or one single technique is going to do all the work for us. We have to figure out which technique is needed right now, because the mind has lots of needs. The breath is your home base, but the other techniques of analyzing the body, developing thoughts of goodwill. There are times when you're going to need to use these as well. You want a full range of tools. And you need the discernment that comes from figuring out which tool is needed at which particular time. Again, more probing and then observing, more probing and observing, being willing to experiment. That's how the mind can be made free from all the things that weigh it, weigh it down, all things with which it weighs itself down. So keep this basic principle in mind. 